Hey guys, Rob the Undead Gamer here, and I've been wanting to make this video pretty much since the reboot of my channel, and that's on YouTube networks. Uh, more specifically, my experience with broadband TV and whether networks are worth it. Now, I can't speak for all networks, as I can only speak from experience with broadband TV, so I can't say if they're all scams or not, but from my experience with broadband TV, I'd say, as a content creator on YouTube, you're better off on your own. Now, I've been on YouTube for about a year by the time Broadband TV, or the Viso Network as they were called, contacted me. Uh, the Viso Network was owned by Broadband TV, who I believe were an umbrella corporation. Uh, no, not that one. I've been doing okay making content and enjoying myself with the small, moderate success I was getting being a small channel. I I'm still a small channel, but this was four years ago. I was sent a message over YouTube by a recruiter called George. Now, I can only show snippets of the messages I was sent due to them not existing in my YouTube inbox anymore, so the emails are the only existence of the messages. Straight away, he was friendly and enthusiastic about my channel and the content I was producing, basically saying I'd be a great addition to the Viso family. We obviously began exchanging emails back and forth, all of which the replies were pretty prompt as he began to explain what I stand to gain from joining the network. Uh, key things being uh, bigger channel exposure, uh, more revenue, brand and partnership deals, help in growing my channel and just general channel support. Now, after explaining how amazing and beneficial it would be for me to, to join the Viso network and how good it would be for myself and my channel, of course I wanted in. I mean, what small YouTuber wouldn't? And it also just seemed like the next natural step for my channel. And on top of that, at the time, the YouTube copyright robot was in full swing, damaging partners and content creators left, right and center. So any help with false copyright strikes and claims would be of great help, or so I thought. Anyway, after receiving a contract, and yes, if you're partnering with a network, you do receive a legally binding contract, generally for a partnership lasting about a year, which can be renewed at the end of said year. So I read the contract to the best of my understanding and signed it. So not long after signing to the Viso network, I didn't really hear from them at all. And then I got a copyright claim on one of my videos. The first one my channel had ever got, and it was for an episode of my Fable Let's Play, which I was doing at the time. I had also seen a 15% drop in viewership over that period. Now, Viso had a website through which I used to upload my content to YouTube called Viso Catalyst. This is basically meant to help out with optimizing your uploads with the best tags and thumbnails, etc. Really, it did exactly what the YouTube uploader did, but was marketed as a handy tool for Viso partners. Now, at the time I started to use Catalyst, it was still in beta. This will become relevant later on. So Viso Catalyst was basically meant to aid in the growth of my channel, preventing 15% drops in viewership. And I want to add, I was doing everything that Viso Catalyst said to do to my videos every time I uploaded. Never mind the fact that I was already doing all of these things before I was even partnered. So with a drop in views and a few copyright claims on my channel, I took to messaging Viso asking for any help or advice. Essentially their advice boiled down to make sure you're using all the features Viso Catalyst had to offer, which I was and that the Catalyst service was still in beta, basically offering no help at all whatsoever. I asked about channel promotion to which they suggested. I tweet their Twitter to see what happens. I was already very active on Twitter and with the Viso Twitter account. God, I was an idiot. And still that provided no help at all. As for the copyright strikes, well, the help they initially offered was to just read YouTube's terms of service and copyright guidelines, which I already had as I was trying to fight the copyright claims defending myself under fair use. So that was no help at all. And I was basically left to fend for myself. So I did. I did research on the company that was attempting to copyright claim my content, discovering that I had more rights to my Let's Play content than they did. They were attempting to claim music from the videos, which was from the Fable soundtrack, only for me to discover that they had nothing to do with Lionhead, the soundtrack, or any part of the development of the game whatsoever. So I used that fact as well as fair use to fight off their claims. However, 
this was my last shot to fight their claims, as if they'd revoked my appeal, I could have got a copyright strike on my channel. So, I reached out to Viso. I explained the situation in full, and whilst attempting to be diplomatic and nice, I was essentially pleading with them, hoping they could do something. This was their response. Unfortunately, we cannot help you dispute any claims with a handy link to YouTube's own copyright FAQ. I was beyond annoyed and frustrated as there was literally no benefit to me being with the network. I sadly stayed with them for another three years, one year of which my channel was inactive. My channel only grew due to my hard work and dedication and passion for it. They never supported me, spotlit or highlighted my channel or acknowledged its existence. The brand deals were a straight up lie. And as for their services, well, up until my leaving the network in late 2016, Viso Catalyst was still in beta. And more broken than ever, you couldn't upload through it, yet they were still pushing the service. Now, as with all networks, they take a cut of your revenue, and they do this on top of Google, who also take a cut, which leaves you with even less earnings. Not that I ever earned that much from YouTube, especially back then, but it all adds up. And being on my own, I'm much better off than I was before, as the revenue I earn is more or less 100% mine now. Broadband TV aren't sapping off my content anymore. I wish I'd cut ties with them sooner, but even after all this stuff I went through, I somehow thought I was better off with them, and that maybe something would change. This is a company that didn't care about me, my channel, or the content I produced, and that was evident from the moment I signed that contract to the time I left. This isn't to say that all networks are bad or full of empty promises or there to take advantage of you, because I'm sure there are some out there that could really benefit you and your channel. But if you are approached by a network, make sure you read that contract and if you can, get a lawyer to look over it for you. Be sure about what you're signing yourself up for. Do as much research and digging around into the company as possible. Don't get burned. My advice would be to stay independent personally as that way you're pretty much in control of your own destiny, as it were. Don't be sucked in by promises of exposure and making it big. But of course, this is just my experience with one network. There are tons of people that have also been with Broadband TV and had different experiences. I just needed to voice mine. I don't particularly believe in YouTube networks anymore, and I think for the most part, they're becoming a little bit outdated, especially with the rise of things like Patreon and other crowdfunding websites, where you can really own your content and the money you earn. But either way, just be careful. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Be sure to stay tuned for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one. I've been Rob the Undead Gamer. I'll see you soon.